Hello and welcome to this edition of Interview. I'm Alexandra Illich. On today's show, we are going to discuss MSU's Race for the Place with MSU Safe Place Director and Race Committee member Holly Rosen, MSU Sexual Assault Program Therapist Lauren Alsweed, and MSU Professor and Domestic Violence Survivor Bonnie Buckaroo. But before we go into the interview, let's take a look at last year's MSU Race for the Place event. The rain and snow didn't stop these walkers from getting out and getting active for a great cause. MSU Race for the Place um, is a great way for the community to come out and support um, our program. Um, it's for competitive walkers and runners or just people who want to come out and support our program. The event kicked off with a 5K run and continued with a kids one mile fun run followed by a run with the Spartans and a 100-yard dash. Race for the Place is funded by over 20 different sponsors and volunteers, including those from MSU's NPHC. When we found out that this walk had something to do with domestic violence, we just decided that it would be a good look for us to support the community, as well as all the women that are going through things out there. Although the race was full of fun and games, MSU Safe Place still reminded runners of the purpose behind the event. MSU Safe Place provides emergency shelter, counseling, and support group for people who are experiencing relationship violence and stalking. Artwork from the Clothesline Project hung on the insides of the building to demonstrate the voices of women who have been victims of violence. And it's very important to understand you always have a place to go. I would give every last dime I have to this organization. All proceeds for the event will go towards funding MSU's safe place and continuing to shelter women in need. In East Lansing, Shaughnessy Shree, Home TV. Looks like a very exciting and beneficial event. Now that we had a chance to see what MSU's Race for the Place is all about, let's introduce our guest. Joining me now are our three guests who are here to discuss not only MSU Race for the Place, but also domestic violence. Thank you so much for being here today. Could you each introduce yourselves and tell me um, how you're involved with MSU Race for the Place? Well, my name is Holly Rosen and I'm the director of MSU Safe Place and I've been involved in MSU Safe Place for 20 years and on the race committee for that time period as well. My name is Lauren Alsweet and I'm a therapist with the MSU Sexual Assault Program and our organization works very closely with Holly's throughout the year. I'm Bonnie Buckaroo and I'm a professor at Michigan State University, teach journalism. I was coordinator of the Victims in the Media program and I am also myself a former domestic violence victim. So what is MSU's uh, Race to the Place? Well, it's a fundraising event that supports a domestic violence and stalking program on campus and it provides an opportunity for um, individuals and family members to come out and have a great time and support a good program. And how are you involved with the event, Lauren? Our program always likes to participate in whatever way we can, whether it's our staff and our volunteers running or walking in the race. I know I've done that before. But as an organization that works so closely with MSU Safe Place throughout the year, our organization just likes to support MSU Safe Place in, in whatever they do. What is the history of this event? I know it's the 20th annual race. What, what is What's the story behind this? Well, the um, MSU Safe Place uh, began in 1994 at, at Michigan State University. Um, at that time, we um, were and still are the only domestic violence shelter on a college campus. Um, and one of the people that was very much um, involved in supporting our event came up with the idea of a 5K run, and we've been doing it every year since. It's been a great way to raise funds and increase community awareness. Rain or shine, you run the event, right? Oh, yeah. We've had... Um, weather is hot as 75, 80 degrees, um, which of course the runners don't like it that hot. Right. Um, and we've had pouring rain and we've had snow, so we've, we've, we have the event regardless of the weather. Lauren, how do you work with MSU Race for the Place to kind of um, plan this event? Well, um, we haven't been a part of the planning committee, but we like to tell our clients and the people that we work with um, about the event so that they can participate. We like to show up on the day of the event as well just to show our support. Obviously, there's a big intersection between domestic violence and sexual assault, and so this is one more way that we can collaborate to raise awareness about issues. Right. What types of planning goes in to this? There's a lot of planning, because uh, an event like a 5K run really requires um, 
a lot of community coordination in terms of getting the, um, the, the running route and getting, of course, on the campus. We have to get approval to run through the campus. Um, we have to get a lot of sponsors to help support the event. And there's just a lot of planning that goes into it. So we start every fall. Um, every October, November, the group meets. And we meet straight up until April, right before the event. Right. How, do you, how many sponsors do you have a year? Do you have a, I'm guessing you have a lot of, of people that want to sponsor We this. do. We have businesses and individuals that are sponsoring our event. Um, we have in-kind donations so that it's events or uh, groups that give um, uh, free services to us. Um, and it's also financial. And we have over 25 sponsors. Wow. Yeah. Bonnie, as a, as a uh, victim of domestic violence, why is something like this so important? I mean, people sometimes don't realize how, you know, this is something that's very sensitive. So how is this something that's... Back when I was victimized, which was almost 40 years ago now, um, there were no services for women. There were no shelters. There were no places to go. And I remember feeling so trapped because even when I would turn to people for help, uh, my husband was ill at the time and I turned to his doctor. He didn't believe me. and. There, were, there was no place I could turn for assistance. I was around here coordinating the Victims in the Media program when Holly started the uh, Safe Place Shelter. And it's so important to have this on a college campus because we want to believe that this happens to other people, people that we don't associate with and don't know. But every time I go out and speak about my own victimization, I'm always stunned by how many upper middle class women will come up to me afterwards and say, I've never told others about this, but I was a victim myself. And I think it's a great tribute to Michigan State and being the only university to acknowledge that this is real. I mean, that's really, a, you know, makes us, I think, unique in being able to offer these services. People are suffering in other places and they don't have somewhere to go. Right. And I think that's really important. Like what Bonnie was saying, this is much more than just a race. This yeah. is an opportunity to break the silence and come together as a community to right. call attention to this issue. And it's not only men, but all, or I'm sorry, not only women, but there's also men that go through domestic violence in relationships. And same-sex couples. Right. And, I mean, it's, it's certainly not limited to by class or race or income or education level. Or, and right. I think that's what we have to acknowledge. Right. And MSU Safe Place does provide shelter, advocacy, support, counseling um, for anyone, uh, male and female, survivors of domestic violence. Right. Mm -hmm. And as part of this event, um, what are some of the, the things that are, you know, there's a 5K race. There's, what else is going on? There's food and mm -hmm. what other games or what else? Happens? Yeah, it's a, it's a real family-centered event, but individuals, also students and community members. Um, we have Sparty there and that's always a thrill for the kids. And we have a 100-yard um, dash and a one-mile run for children as well. So even if adults are not into doing a 5K run themselves, they can bring their children and it's a really fun event. Um, there's food for the race participants. And of course, a lot of people will run and take it very seriously in the 5K, but there's also a lot of people that just want to go out for a good time and just walk um, and, and don't take part in the competitive racing part of it. Right. So. As part of, as you know, as far as impact goes, do you think that this is a good chance for domestic violence survivors or p individuals who are possibly going through domestic violence to kind of get together and share their stories? One of the things we see on campus is that we do have the um, opportunities when the clothesline is out there on campus, people come and they will share their stories of various kinds of victimization. We do offer those opportunities, but I think at the run itself, uh, it's more of a, uh, an opportunity to raise awareness of the issue, but not necessarily to share stories individually at that time. Right. Holly, you've been a part of this for 20 years. Have you seen an increase in participants and individuals that are involved in this? Well, we've had pretty steady numbers. Um, to pull an event off like this, it takes over 100 volunteers. And so we have a lot of people who will work two hours, three hours during that day or the whole day. Um, and so we have the volunteer component, and then we have the kids that attend kids' events, um, and then we have the adult walkers and the runners. And, and it really varies. Some years we might have 500, some years 900. Um, we're hoping for a good turnout this year if the weather cooperates. Mm -hmm. um, even if it doesn't, it'll still hopefully be warmer and we'll get a, a good turnout. Um, so I haven't seen an increase in terms of participation, but um, it's always been a good steady event for our community. Do you have to be a victim of domestic violence to participate in this race? No. 
Um, I'm sure that um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that a lot of people who are there either have family members or loved ones, or they themselves either currently or in the past have been victimized by this. But this is really a good time for just anybody in the community to come forward. Um, the race is on April 13th. There's still time to register. Um, it, we can also volunteer at the event too. But it's a great time for people to come forward and and show their support financially or um, as a you know giving their time as volunteers. Alexandra, as a former race director, I used to do the Duckathon years ago, which was a large race out at Lake Lansing long, long ago. I can tell you that the survival rate on races is, is uh, a lot of them are a few years, and then because of the amount of work and the, the effort that it takes, the fact that this is the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. is really remarkable. This has been a very successful local run. Mm -hmm. I think it's done a great job for raising awareness and for raising resources. Mm -hmm. Right, and I want to thank Playmakers because they have, the, of course, the race series, um, and they're very supportive, and they really are trying to encourage people to be healthy and take part in the races. And I think that the fact that we're part of a whole series of, of groups that have races um, in our community um, has added to the longevity of it. The Playmakers Fitness Foundation too is involved mm -hmm. in trying to help build women's self-esteem by get, have, giving them opportunities to mm -hmm. become more fit mm -hmm. and do these kinds of things. So they've really been part of that effort for a long time. And it's a great way for, you know, there's a lot of students on campus that haven't heard about Safe Place, mm -hmm. but they take part either as volunteers or as walkers or runners in our event. So it's a really good way for people to, um, from the community and from the campus to, to learn about Safe Place and get involved. Um, not just for the financial benefit. Right. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask you, how do you get people involved? I mean, like Bonnie said, to have a race go for 20 years mm -hmm. consistently, you know, people signing up and volunteering, how do you get people to, how do you reach out to people, out to, people to get involved? Well, we have a great um, race committee, um, and one of our larger sponsors is the MSU Federal Credit Union, and they're awesome at helping get the word out and promoting the event, and everybody on our committee works really hard to get the word out. Um, and it is, I think, that we have a group of people every year, a core group of people who are committed to running and walking in it every year, and that's, that's great. And then we have the peripheral people who bring their kids in for the kids' events and the students that are here at MSU at that time. Um, and so I think that year after year there are some regulars that come and then there's other people that just take part for a year or two in the event. Word right. of mouth is critically important in mm -hmm. the running community too. If it weren't a quality event, that's the reason that some of them don't survive very long. So this, right. to have lasted 20 years, it means the runners themselves are very happy with the event. Yeah. Bonnie, if someone were to ask you what is domestic violence and um, how how could you be a victim of domestic violence? Well, what would you say to that? It ranges from uh, verbal abuse and uh, controlling behavior all the way up to physical violence. There were times, I mean, I know what it's like to look into the eyes of somebody that I love and realize I might not be alive tomorrow, that this person might kill me and be in that kind of situation. That occurred many decades ago and I'm very glad that I am a survivor uh, because too many of the people that I know have, have been victimized and didn't make it. It is um, far more prevalent than people realize. It's a devastating thing. Uh, you know, we talk about self-esteem, but in reality, I had a fairly healthy self-esteem until I was abused. It eroded my self-esteem. It is a devastating kind of problem because what people fail to realize, I know the one question everybody asks domestic violence victims is, why do you stay? And the reality, of course, is that we have many relationships. If, a, if your mother slaps you, you don't move out and say, I'll never talk to you again. I mean, it's relationship violence. And when you have relationships with people, I think women especially think that they can always view men as a sort of giant reclamation project and reform them. And they don't realize sometimes the danger they're in. And this is a critical issue, I think, to raise in the whole community and have a safe place where women can go so that they can uh, have an opportunity to get out and save their own lives. Right. It, this isn't just a race, you know, to with, with when people who have been victimized with domestic violence and sexual assault and things like that. This is something that you all year are working with with victims and other people. That's right? correct. The MSU Safe Place program is running 24/7. We're here all the time providing shelter, emergency temporary shelter, or advocacy is our largest service that people use, or um, counseling Place support groups, um, child care. We provide a lot of support to people who need it, and it's ongoing. If you're in an abusive relationship, um, it's not a matter of just saying, okay, the relationship's over, I'm done with this, and then moving on with your life. Um, most batters are going to stalk and threaten and, and try to be charming to get the person back. Um, somebody who's dealing with domestic violence needs a lot of support and a lot of safety planning. And that's what Safe Place is there for all year long. Right. 
We and know that a woman's risk of being murdered is higher as she's leaving than if she stays. So it is that critical time when they're trying to get free of the relationship. And that's what makes a facility like this so, so extremely important to have on campus. Right. Do you think part of the race that, that takes place helps victims to um, reach out to other people? I mean, I, obviously, you, they, they run. And afterwards, you know, making small talk and eating and stuff, do you think that this is so significant because victims are able to share their stories and kind of, you know, get the word out? Well, I think that the Clothesline Project does um, provide an opportunity for people to go to the event and hear and learn about people's stories. And that is the voice for victims in terms of sharing their stories. But the 5K Run really brings the community together um, and allows people to come forward and provide support. Um, but it does also educate survivors um, about the event. You know, they might hear about the 5K Run on the news and they never heard about Safe Place before. So I think that there's that added benefit of having a fundraising event like this is the awareness that results um, from the event. And the race is lighthearted and it's, and it's fun and it's a great activity, but like Holly said, the Clothesline Project is an opportunity for people to, to connect and, and focus on why they're there and why they're running. It's an amazing project. Right, yeah, what, can you talk to me about what the Clothesline Project is? Yep, it is, it's wonderful. It's a very moving experience. Survivors of different types of violence, um, sexual assault, domestic violence, child abuse, can create a t-shirt to talk a little bit, uh, share whatever portion of their story they want to. Some talk about the abuse itself, others talk about their healing journey or their connection with others. And then those shirts are displayed in the clothesline so people can walk through and see all the shirts. And the, the, the powerful part of the project is not only being able to witness individual stories, but also in understanding the collective experience of violence that people have. I was on campus and during the Take Back the Night when the clothesline was there, and one of the women who had come and spoke frequently in my classes to help journalists know how to interview victims of violence, I was so moved when I saw the T-shirt that she had put there in honor of her daughter. Her daughter was mur murdered by an abusive mm -hmm. boyfriend. Uh, the mother's boyfriend and so I mean sometimes we don't realize that it's not just the individual who's at risk whole families are at risk mm -hmm. right. what happens following the clothesline project so these individuals write there's a little brief story about their experience and then it hangs on a clothesline and then then what where does that go and do they take them home with them or the, the t-shirt becomes a part of the clothesline project and that's a, a moving display. So that is up at events like Race for the Place or, or Take Back the Night, which is an annual event to raise awareness also about violence against women. And it just becomes a part of everybody's story and of everybody's history. Right. So when, when survivors paint on the shirts, they give permission mm -hmm. for you to display them at various right. events. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a powerful way of sharing, of vocalizing, of breaking the silence. Right. Do a lot of the, the individuals that participate in the event take part in the clothesline project? I think most people for Race for the Place are able just to witness it, um, okay. but people can always make a shirt and submit that um, to the project. I know that MSU Sexual Assault Program houses the, the clothesline project right now. How can people get involved with that? Well, they can visit our, our program office, our website, endrape.msu.edu, for more information about the project or to submit a shirt. We can provide the materials for that. Where will the clothesline be displayed at the race? Will it be displayed at the race? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, the display for the clothesline project is inside Jenison. Mm -hmm. um, the race starts at 1 o'clock on April 13th. That's a Sunday. Um, but people get there 11, 30, 12 o'clock, either to register that day or um, just to, to be there and warm up and that kind of thing. And the clothesline display is within Jenison. So even if it's pouring rain um, mm -hmm. and bad weather, you can see it. And it's a very intense experience. If people have never seen it before, I recommend it's very, it's rather somber, but it's it's honest, true stories of people who have been victimized. When you say intense, how is it an intense thing? Obviously, people are spilling out their stories on a T-shirt and mm -hmm. other for other people to see. But can you go into more depth on how it's? I think it's a you know people will write words, they'll draw pictures, um, and it's just some of them are rather graphic um, others are just they talk about the pain that they've experienced from incest or sexual assault or domestic violence or the loss of a loved one for a homicide um, and it's just it's it's a very moving experience the sheer numbers are unsettling as well the, I think we think of this as a rare occurrence and when you see the shirts there you realize it isn't rare Bonnie, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. These types of crimes, you know, domestic violence, sexual assault, um, and they are crimes, 
are the types of things that happen um, behind closed doors, in the privacy of one's home, away from others. There's often not witnesses. Um, and so it's really a very um, private, you know, shameful experience. And a lot of people have no clue how, how prevalent it is. Right. Bonnie, someone, who, someone like you who is a domestic violence victim, what kind of advice could you give people who are going through that situation? To get help, and um, indeed it's to reach out, and because there are services available. I think part of what we have to acknowledge as well is that survivors of domestic violence offer su often suffer consequences far after the victimization itself, even if they get free. Continued stalking, they may have suffer from depression, they may have post-traumatic stress disorder. The consequences of this kind of uh, crime that occurs against people really is profound in our culture. I was talking with a therapist once about the issue and she said when the waitress came over to gave us, give us coffee, we don't know that woman's story. Mm -hmm. She may well be a survivor of violence. When you think about all the long-term consequences, the lost time at work, the medical bills, um, the fact that women may not achieve their full potential because they're still trying to struggle to heal from these things. It really has a profound effect on our whole community and our whole culture. Right. It's not an individual crime, it's a community crime. It has a huge impact on the community. Right, I can, I can imagine. I mean, there's a whole race put on for, for something like that. Mm -hmm. What are some things that are going on at the race this year that may be different from the previous years? Anything special going on? Um, I think the the schedule is pretty much the same. Um, Sparty will be there and there's the, the 5K run and the um, 100 um, yard dash and the one mile run um, and lots of food and lots of networking and talking. And right. Runners want to know how deep the awards go. <laughs> <laughs> People are always happy with our awards and yeah. we have door prizes and because this is MSU Safe Place's 20th anniversary if people give extra donations at the time that they register or at the event um, $20 um, for our uh, 20th um, they'll also be in a drawing for a prize as well. So this year we do have that component to it because it is our 20th anniversary. Right. Is there anything else that you would like to add about this event that's going, going taking place? Um, just encourage people to consider either walking, running, or volunteering for the event. And, and they can go to the MSU Federal Credit Union website or Safe Place website and get more information. To sign up. And they can to still sign up. sign up, correct? Yes, they can. Okay. Yes. Up until race day. Okay. I would just like to congratulate Holly, who was here when this <laughs> program got started 20 years ago. So can you think of all the people that she's helped over the years mm -hmm. with this program? It's really remarkable. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank, well, thank you. you for having us. That's all the time we have for this edition of Interview. You can follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Home TV or use the hashtag interview. For Home TV, I'm Alexandra Illich. Thank you for joining us.